Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today, I think some of you at least will be happy to learn that we have another canon chapter. And this one is quite special, as it almost came out of nowhere. As it turns out, it is quite literally a new chapter, created by the White Dwarf magazine just in 2020. Their name is the Tome Keepers, and there's quite a bit of lore behind them, enough for at least two or three videos. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn about their history, shall we? The origins of the Tome Keepers harken back to the dark days of the 32nd millennium, following the disastrous events of the War of the Beast, when the Imperium was brought to its knees by the biggest Orc War ever. Soon after that great conflict ended in 546 M32, followed a period of mandatory gene tithing by the surviving chapters of Astartes to help rebuild the stores of gene seed of the Adeptus Mechanicus. And so, the fourth founding was raised. For nearly a century, the Imperium had descended into a period of anarchy and infighting. The newly created chapters of this founding would be used to help restore order to an Imperium rife with civil upheaval and insurrection. Gene Seed was taken out of cryo storage and samples received from all the extant chapters. And it was from the Ultramarine Gene Stock that Chapter 281, later to become known as the Tome Keepers, was born. As with many newly created chapters, officers and specialists were requisitioned from the parent chapter. One Captain Kalus Viator, formerly of the Ultramarine's second company, was elevated to the rank of Chapter Master and oversaw the creation and training of 400 Battle Brothers over the next two decades. The training grounds of the new chapter would be that of the world of Dornak IV, a barren death world in the Segmentum Solar. The aspirants were subjected to years of harsh physical training, psycho-indoctrination, genetic alteration and painful surgical modifications before they were finally ready to become warriors of the Adeptus Astartes. Several hundred would pass the grueling tests, many thousands would not. As the forces of Viator came to battlefield readiness, the assets of the chapter were also assigned. Battle barges and strike cruisers arrived from McCrag, along with armored vehicles, drop pods, aircraft, dreadnought chassis, and 20 suits of Terminator armor. Accompanying these war assets were also thousands of chapter serfs, Logisticians, techs, ship crews, medics, fabricators, artisans, artificers, architects, servitors, and many, many others. Supplies were accumulated from planetary types, ammunition was allocated, litanies were recited, and the machine spirits were appeased. And so, by the year 567 M32, the chapter known then only as 281 was ready to serve the Emperor. Assigned to watch over the Segmentum Pacificus and the warp routes towards Terra from the Galactic West, the starships of this chapter headed for the Sol System's Mandeville Point and made the warp translation to the little-known Karakros subsector without incident. This region of space was sparsely populated according to Imperial records, but it did teem with alien lifeforms, from Eldar Corsairs to Hrod infestations and marauding warbands of orcs. But there was one planetary system, at the heart of the Karakros sector, that they all seemed to avoid. It was in this system, designated GB-6-77, that the chapter decided to make a home. Four of the system's eight planets were inhabited. They made planetfall on the desert planet called Istroma. This was wracked by constant tectonic upheaval due to its erratic orbit and bathed in the deadly radiation of the system's nearby White Dwarf Star. Due to their planet being constantly irradiated by the light of the nearby star, the inhabitants of this harsh, desolate planet lived shorter lives than average, dying quite early of radiation-induced sickness. To preserve their history and culture, the people of this planet became obsessed with meticulous recording of every facet of their lives in great tomes for future generations. That's because they didn't have the benefits of having elders among their population to teach the younger ones. 
In this way, they were able to salvage their combined knowledge and experience, and ensure the continuation of their society. What the Space Marines discovered when they landed was a world which had been forgotten by the Imperium, a mere footnote in a galaxy of a million worlds. Yet the Stroman people welcomed the Space Marines with open arms, for they recognized them as the Sky Warriors of old and great heroes of humanity. Chapter Master Kalos Viator and his retinue were treated as honored guests and led to Nivene, the world principal city, where they were received with dignity and awe by the Planetary Council. The Space Marines were told the long history of the Stroma and how its people traveled from ancient Terra millennia ago, and they were shown many great artifacts wrought by the planet's artisans. The Astartes were told of the great tragedy which had befallen the people of Stroma, and how over thousands of years, their life expectancy had fallen drastically as their technology declined, and now the inhabitants rarely lived past the age of 30. Children became apprentices at a very young age, working with members of their family in their chosen craft. Skills were taught very quickly, and everything was chronicled in the personal journals so that future generations could pick up where their forebears left off. Thus, the artifacts previously shown to Viator and his officers so proudly took on another meaning. They had not been crafted by just one person, but by scores of artisans over many short lifetimes. Yet the Stromans did not begrudge their short lives, for they knew, as they explained to Viator and the others, that although their books may close, their legends would live on through their words. Death, they said, was to be embraced, not feared. The Space Marines were taken beneath the city of Nivene, where they bore witness to a vast library that was almost the size of a city by itself. Entire streets and thoroughfares were dedicated to millions and millions of books, data slates, and information terminals. And upon those shelves lay a history of eons. The contents of the library would also shape the chapter's future for millennia to come. Kalos Vator does believe that Estroma and its inhabitants had great promise. He saw that the people were hardy and resourceful, and their accumulated knowledge was almost beyond comprehension. To the tactically minded Vyator, the collection of monographs in the library was reason enough to forge Estroma into a chapter planet. And so, with the blessings of the Planetary Council, orbital landers descended out of the clouds, and construction began on a vast chapter fortress monastery atop the Zatos Mountains at the planet's inhospitable northern pole. To honor this event, the Stromans presented Vyator with one of their greatest possessions, a stasis-sealed volume known as the White Book. Vyator returned the honor in the naming of the chapter. Thus, Chapter 281 and its warriors would forever be known as the Tome Keepers. Estroma did prove to be a wise choice for the chapter's homeworld. The planetary system was rich in natural resources, and the four inhabited planets provided a good number of recruits. Many families put their sons forward for what became known by the chapter as the Trial of Pages, in the hope that they too would become Sky Warriors, bringing great honor upon the family name. The young hopefuls competed in trials of strength and endurance before being taken far into the desert to test their survival skill. They fought each other in especially constructed arenas, watched closely by the Master of Recruits. Many did not survive. As the survivors became neophytes though, they began the organ implantation required to become a space marine. But when the progenoids were implanted, the chapter apothecaries noticed a curious psychological side effect. The previously short-lived Stromans were now virtually immortal because of the abilities of a space marine, and many of them actually struggled with this dichotomy, feeling that they were being denied their rightful place among their departed ancestors. The feeling was echoed by many of the Stroman people themselves, who began to see them not as the glorious warriors of legend, but as pariahs. Some of the new Tomekeeper marines tended towards recklessness thus, seeing themselves as dead men walking, having already outlived their natural lifespan. Many more became sullen and introspective. 
but within all of them was instilled the fearlessness of death and the mutual acceptance of mortality's impermanence, which surpassed even that of their own people. However, with careful psycho-indoctrination, the new recruits learned to harness their grim resolve, but something was still rankling within them. Many of them would use their solar minutes of personal time each day to write a journal, a persistent hangover from their former lives that even the chaplains seemed unable to quell. As the neophytes became fully-fledged battle brothers and eventually veterans, they began to note down observations on their foes, devising new tactics and strategies for their destruction. Chapter Master Kalos Viator was watching with interest. Although the Codex Astartes promoted adherence, it also encouraged innovation. Had not their Primarch Gilliman praised the pursuit and acquisition of knowledge? As the chapter finally grew to full fighting strength, Viator called for his battle brothers to embrace the traditions of Istroma. The brothers were encouraged to develop new skills and develop their understanding of their myriad enemies. Many books were written, and over the following millennia, many books were closed as well. The dying years of the 41st millennium would be a trying time for the Tome Keepers. Two centuries of war with the Necron Falked dynasty had already taken their toll, as the Greater Rift then sundered the galaxy in two. The chapter, reduced to barely three companies at that point, was facing annihilation. In fact, during one particularly bad year, the recruitment trial of pages yielded disappointing results producing just one successful aspirant. This was considered a bad omen by the chapter. But what happened to them next, and whether they survived, is a story for the next time. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Tome Keepers and their quite original and interesting backstory for today. Like I said in the beginning, there's a lot more lore on these guys, so if you found them interesting, we're gonna learn more about the chapter itself and their war stories next time. If you're wondering why all of them appear as Primaris Marines in the art, I'm wondering that myself. Maybe they were too lazy to draw their pre-Primaris versions. Anyway, if you have any thoughts or questions about them, do write them down in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot for watching, and the Emperor protects!